What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Cloudy Sky Entertainment. This is Killer Content. This is that new show where we pick a random horror movie, we talk about it, say what we liked about it, then we give you a couple of facts about the movie that you might not know about. Today, we are jumping into what movie, Noah? What movie did we just go watch again? John Carpenter's classic, The Fog from 1980. I'm so excited. You see how excited I, I sounded? Because you know what? I love this movie. It is a good, it is a good one. Uh, it's not as good as the remake. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Get out of here. Fire. <laughs> the remake is terrible. <laughs> yes, the five John Carpenter's 1980 masterpiece. Uh, and in a nutshell, y'all, this movie, if you've never seen it, it's uh, it got it has everything you want in a movie: fog and murdering ghosts that come out of the fog. <laughs> That's all I need. That's all, all I need. need. Uh, Noah what do you love about this movie okay yeah we're jumping right into the love portion okay all right so right um it. right into it all right so um if you watch the fog guess you know the plot so some of the things i like involve the plot so i love the fact that it is a homage to sort of a lovecraftian tale and actually if you think about the thing as well um john carpenter draws from a lot of lovecraft i personally you know, uh, I've read every single one of H.P. Lovecraft's books, and I like that. I like Hal Holbrook, Holbrook in the movie. I might be the minority here, but the end scene with the cross in the church, oh my gosh, what classic horror. It is phenomenal. Lit well, you know, all the great stuff. I love how the revenants, the ghosts, the revenge field fiends are barely shown. Same thing with Michael Myers. It's like you know, in the thing, it was show, not tell, right? And in these movies, it was tell, not show. So it adds just to the ghoulish factor of the whole thing. And B, uh, I don't know why I said B, but the third thing I love uh, is the fact that it's sort of a, a, a tale within a tale. It's a story within a story. It's a ghost story told from the perspective of a, like a campfire scene. And the only reason I go camping is because I can tell horror stories. Yes, I'm still a grown man. I'll go camping for one reason only. I don't even give a shit about s'mores. I just want to tell horror stories around the campfire. I could go on and on and on and on about what I love with this film, but I'm going to throw it back to you right now. What do you love about this film? The number one thing I love about this movie is the way it is shot. The scenes are phenomenal. For the time period, for the 80s, it still holds up. Those scenes yeah. with the fog... They scare the shit out of me. So there is a scene that towards the end of the movie, like no Ed said, we're there in this church and all the ghosts are standing around. That scene is still scary to this day as an adult. I mean, as a kid, it scared the hell out of me as an adult, still scary as hell. Uh, and the other things I like are, yeah, it's not, it, it's one of those movies. It's more psychological. Almost. He does. It's not a whole lot of jump scares. Like, cause you kind of already know that the ghost is there. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, the story within a story is, yes. So basically, we didn't really go over the plot for this movie, but what it is, is there is these ghosts that are like old pirates and they want their treasure. Mm -hmm. And the priest, I can't remember his name. Do you remember the priest's name? Yeah, uh, Father Malone. Father Malone, that's right. I had a little brain fart there. Uh, yeah, he's the one throughout the story letting everyone know what's really happening uh so i love that and then i that, that end scene with the gold crossed amazing uh, that's what i liked about the film what did you not like about this film okay so uh the town name uh antonio bay sounds like the uh worst um soap opera name ever <laughs> you know it's not it doesn't bring anything cool to the table antonio bay um I don't like the fact that John Carpenter felt like he needed to add all these gory elements into the film. Um, I think it, I like a ghost story, just let it be, you know. Uh, I'm not thrilled with his score in this film either. Like the dude's a great composer, but it just doesn't do it for me. He's got so many greater scores out there. It's just like mm, sort of melancholy and it does get a little boring. I mean, it does get a little boring in some parts um, and that is just uh, not good. You know, I, I don't like that. What about you? Uh, it's, it's same. Uh, the, yes, it does get boring. Um, it's, and that's with the horror movies in general back in the day. They did drag mm -hmm. scenes out that they didn't need to. 
Um, I didn't like that. Another thing, thing I didn't, I don't like about this movie is Jamie Lee Curtis plays no role in this movie. <laughs> I don't, I know why she's in it and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but I, I didn't like her in this movie and I love her in general, but I just, I didn't like her character in this movie. Um, and the music, the like the radio, st- we'll talk about that too later on and we'll tell you guys why, but uh, the, the, the actress, like the person who's there, there's a DJ radio station in the lighthouse and she's the kind of the one warning people too. Uh, the music she plays doesn't really fit her, if that makes sense. Uh, I didn't like that. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I didn't like overall. Yeah, not bad. More likes and dislikes. I'm curious as to uh, the audience. What do you guys, do you guys have more likes and dislikes? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Awesome. With that said, let's jump into some 10 facts you might not know about this movie. Noah, start We're- us off. All right, fact number one. So we mentioned Jamie Lee Curtis earlier. So John Carpenter uh, took some inspiration for this film from the other California Gothic horror tales from Alfred Hitchcock. So he decided to put Janet Lee in the film as well. And as you know, Janet Lee is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. And so they get to experience a film together. And it's probably their first film together before they do Halloween H2O that many years later. Solid, solid. All right, y'all. So something that's interesting about this movie is the we didn't really talk about, but the plot is kind of clunky and uh, isn't really explained all that well in the movie. But there later on, there was a book that came out that did explain the plot way more in depth. So if you are into this movie, you did if you didn't know there was a book form out there, there is a book of the fog. Go check it out. It will explain the plot in more detail. Number three, and speaking of plot, uh, you know what? John Carpenter didn't didn't love this film. He had had done Halloween. He saw other horror movies like Scanners that came out, the Cronenberg film, the classic scene of like the head exploding. So he actually reshot one third of this entire movie because he thought it would flop and people wouldn't connect to it as, you know, someone that directed, you know, the classic Halloween. He created a slasher and then he felt like he had to add more slasher elements in. The uh, campfire scene added in. The fight at the end of the um, the whole movie in the lighthouse, that was in the reshoots. So was the reanimation scene of the corpse in the morgue and a lot of the kills. Awesome, awesome. Noah, did you know this? Did you know that Jamie Lee Curtis only did this movie as a favor to John Carpenter? Really? Really. He, uh, wow, so, no. so yeah, she's doing all these other movies. He was feeling bad for her. He wrote a part in the movie for her. I feel like she felt like she was obligated to do it. Boom. She's in the movie. And then, you know, if you notice all the marketing, they really market this movie around her character, uh, which If you've seen the movie, like I said before, her character plays real no big. It doesn't really play a part in the movie all that all that much. All right. What's another fact? Number five. So uh, Tom Atkins character in this film is named Nick Castle. Why does that name sound familiar? Well, I'm wearing a Halloween Michael Myers shirt. There's a mask right there. Nick Castle played the shape in Halloween. So John Carpenter paid homage to his good buddy Nick Castle in this film solid speaking of john's friends and he loves doing stuff for them did you know most if almost all the ghost hands you see in this movie are played by one guy and that is john carpenter's lifelong childhood best friend tommy wallace that guy's pretty handy don't 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 number seven so speaking of john carpenter and friends he got really friendly as in dating deborah hill in halloween okay so then in this film, Adrian Barbeau comes along. You know, he just straight up marries her. But De- Deborah Hill is so professional. She continues that relationship with John Carpenter throughout many more films together. And actually, she doesn't give enough, get enough credit. Give Deborah Hill more credit for her creative influence in these films and, and more. And just being a stand-up person dealing with this sort of situation. I don't know if I could have done the same thing. Deborah Hill, you're a hero. You are a hero. Speaking of John, 
Did y'all know that he's actually in the movie? He literally casted himself in this movie. And this is why we don't ever see John Carpenter in any more movies. He actually hated his role in this movie. So he didn't recast himself in anything he did afterwards. Wow. Too harsh. You know, sometimes you, you, you're your own worst critic. This is very true. Happens. Happens. Um, speaking of John Carpenter, here's, here's the next fun fact. So he actually thought that he would make The Fog into an anthology series. He wouldn't just have, you know, uh, revengeful spirits who were pissed off because they couldn't start their leper colony and, you know, a church took all their gold and turned into a cross. He would also have different monsters. Like one time it would be like creatures from the fog and then all this other things. But that didn't happen. But that idea carried over in John Carpenter's brain to Halloween 3, which wanted, you know, jumped off. Well, it didn't jump off anyway, man. If you've seen Halloween 3, they wanted to be an anthology series. And they're like, nope, this sucks. Let's get my, more Michael Myers back in here. So, you know, John Carpenter never got to do his anthology series. Poor, poor dude. Oh. All right, y'all. I said I would circle back around to the music. And this is my last fun fact. There is a reason that they're playing jazz on that radio station. And the reason is they're cheap. <laughs> that's right it costs more money to get rock and roll music it costs them nothing to get those jazz tunes and that's why that radio station plays jazz music Ooh, nice and, but i love jazz music so i love just that scene but uh you're right adrian barbeau's character doesn't doesn't match the, the music she's playing um i did know this too and this is maybe a little bonus fact so john carpenter and deborah hill were vacationing in stonehenge and literally a fog bank rolled in so that's kind of where the idea and inspiration for this film came from is going to stonehenge and being completely creeped out by a, a fog bank that rolls in and actually fog is still kind of creepy right uh i've yeah. seen some really dense fog and i'm like whoa there could be anything it's gonna grab me up right now so and then the mist came along which is another movie i'm like i just want clear skies for the rest of my life fog get the fuck out of here yeah the, the concept of the fog is an amazing concept where you have fog and you can't see anything and yet there's ghosts hiding within the fog i love it i love it uh y'all that's it that's the fog definitely go check it out you don't need to watch the remake. <laughs> Stay away. From, unless you're a Tom Welling fan, then sure, go watch it. But watch this one before that. Anyway, y'all, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss another one of our videos. And we'll see y'all in the next episode of Killer Content. And bonus. If you have any movies that you want us to talk about, make sure you comment below because we're always taking suggestions of films that we can watch and review and let you know what we think about them. And comment below if you like this film. Give us some suggestions. Some suggestions. Give us some suggestions. Um, I'm not editing that out. That's saying and that's gold. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, but yes, that's my All final right. thing, y'all. All right, we'll see y'all next time.